Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. Um, please like, subscribe, and share if you find the content that I provide every week uh, useful. And uh, thank you for all of the uh, the kind comments on my videos. Um, I will try and get back to you all as soon as I can. And just a Quick reminder, I guess, of the Trading 180 process. Um, we use both fundamental and technical analysis to really um, choose and make the best trading decisions. It's not one versus the other. Um, we use the best of both. So apply fundamental analysis to establish our overall directional bias, uh, medium to long term, and then apply technical strategies, supply and demand strategies to time uh, trade entries, risk management, and establish profits. So let's get into the coming week and um, in the week ahead, zoom out a little bit. Actually, let me zoom in a little bit, all right? Um, on trading economics, so we've got uh, trouble in equity markets. The synopsis, I guess, um, may not be over with uh, investors looking for further clues on the, f on the course of the Fed's monetary policy and monitoring earning results from big retailers. So stock market's been setting off recently, a bit of risk off sentiment coming into the market, actually coming into the market. It's really been a risk off environment um, when you think about, you know, Ukraine, uh, Russia, um, you know, conflict. Um, inflation, you know, is 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 a risk off event as well. So uh, uh, lots of risk off, and, and and now the stock market is uh, is selling off. So retail sales, housing data, and speeches by fe several Fed officials will take centre stage in the U.S. Elsewhere, the inflation uh, rates for U.K., Canada, and Japan will be closely watched. So again, inf you know, high inflation for pretty much everywhere. Um, the U.S. in the U.S. traders will keep a close eye on speeches from several Fed officials, including the appearance of Fed Chair. Powell at the Wall Street Journal conference. Also, retail sales are expected to show in consumer spending picked up in April while fresh figures for industrial production, the New York uh, Empire State Manufacturing Index and Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index will probably point to a slowdown in the industrial sector. So I think um, there's going to be a slowdown in pretty much um, in every country. Um, uh, uh, every country is facing, um, you know, contraction or, or potential recessions, um, especially, you know, the likes of uh, Europe and uh, the UK, even more so than the US. Um, elsewhere in America, it will be interesting uh, to follow Canada's consumer and producer inflation and GDP growth figures uh, for Colombia, not really following Colombia, Chile or Peru. Um, it will be a busy week in the UK with several indicators providing an update on the British economy economic performance. Um, consumer inflation surged to 9.1% uh, last month, which would be the biggest rate on record since n at least 1991. The unemployment rate is seen steady at three-year lows at 3.8%, while wage growth probably remained elevated. In uh, other signs, uh, consumer living standards is squeezing. So, um, Europe and 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 uh, the Europe, sorry, Europe and the UK are uh, really kind of uh, going into the stagflation phase where they've got high um, inflation um, and uh, contraction in the contraction phase, I guess, of the um, economic uh, business uh, cycle, GDP cycle. So. Um, you know, there, there are problems, major problems everywhere, but even more so, in, I think, in Europe and the UK, uh, regardless of whether central banks are hiking rates. Meanwhile, uh, traders will follow the Bank of England monetary policy uh, report hearing on, uh, sorry, in front of the Treasury Committee on Monday with Governor Bailey in attendance elsewhere in Europe. Uh, Russia expected to uh, release GDP figures. Traders will also keep an eye on European Commission's fresh spring forecasts, and that's going to be important because it just tells us what the central bank are thinking and what their you know monetary policy plans are. Um, from a speech from President Christine Lagarde in Darmstadt, Germany, uh, could provide further clues on the central bank's plans to fight inflation. Right, uh, euro area second estimate for GDP growth, final CPI figures, consumer confidence, and trade data so that's always that's all going to be um, important so uh 
Germany wholesale producer prices, France unemployment rate for quarter one, and Italy trade balance, Japan GDP uh, and inflation data are due. So the uh, the Japanese economy is seen contracting 0.4% in the first three months of 2022 after growing 1.1% in the previous quarter, likely weighed down by the impact of public health restrictions to curb Omicron on private spending and exports. And then there's China and Australia. All right, the jobless rate is likely to uh, likely decline to fresh record lows. So that's going to be good in April uh, for them. Additionally, the nation holds federal elections uh, so you've got local elections uh, elsewhere, Thailand and the Philippines. Right, so um, some decent market moving news, um, especially in somewhere like um, <clears throat> in the UK um, and uh, I wouldn't say Europe so much because it's second quarter estimates because the first quarter estimates are already out. So let's see what happens um, in the week ahead. So starting off on the dollar index dollar index just a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies uh, like the euro the pound and the yen and I've got last week's analysis on here um, again waiting for a bit of a pullback um, because ultimately uh, you don't really want to be buying the dollar at highs and I'm buying the dollar at highs this isn't financial advice um, I'm buying I'm still bullish on the dollar although I do see the upside potential um, uh, waning uh, for now um, and I'm actually short on the actual dollar as well um, um, on, uh, for the dollar CAD but against everything else I'm, I'm pretty bullish on the dollar um, but um, but yeah so we've got uh, over on, on bullish on the dollar and uh, last week was waiting for really prices to see if they could pull back a little bit but obviously didn't kept going higher um, but now that presents an opportunity and when I say pullback, I wasn't really looking to trade the US, um, uh, the, the, the dollar index, just use it as a confluence, I guess. So any pullbacks into a demand zone, that would be really what you want to do. And then look for, you know, demand zones or maybe the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, if you're looking to buy uh, those currencies, right? But overall, I'm bullish on the dollar, um, the US dollar, but um, I have got opened a position on the dollar CAD um, short, and that's for uh, for several reasons uh, that I share with the private group. And in fact, talking about the private group, I know a lot of people have been asking when the enrollment date is, and so uh, get full access to the supply and demand course content as well as the fundamental analysis. Um, and the enrollment really opens on the 6th uh, of June and closes on the 10th, so there's a small window um, you know, to, to, to join up and um, I like to keep the group uh, fairly uh, small and limited, not open to, to everybody as uh, everyone can then get the best um, and I can kind of focus the group. So it will be open only for a limited time for about five days from the 6th to the 10th of June. Um, and you can watch this video as well, it tells you all about the um, uh, the uh, the course as well as the uh, Discord group and what exactly I do and uh, to get um, traders uh, getting the results uh, that they hope to get. So getting back to the uh, the charts and getting back in fact to the to some fundamental analysis and the Federal Reserve uh, Fed's daily says strong economy can tolerate fifty basis point hikes and that is really key because. Um, Although inflation is, you know, going higher and central banks are hiking, the key difference is understanding which economies can um, uh, tolerate, I guess, or um, accommodate a, uh, a, a, a hike. Because if you're hiking um, and your economy is not doing so well, you could make, you know, the economy worse because you're making borrowing costs and lending costs expensive for businesses who are trying to go, trying to grow. So um, all central banks have this problem, but um, some more so than others. And uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco President Mary Daly uh, backed raising rates by half a percentage point at each of the central bank's next two meetings, adding that she'd like to see financial conditions tighten further. So um, uh, going up uh, in 50 basis point increments to me makes quite a bit of sense. And there's no reason right now that I see the economy to pause on doing uh, that in the next couple of meetings, Daly said in an interview Thursday with Bloomberg News. So, you know, that really kind of confirms, um, you know, uh, what we say, what we teach, I guess, in with, when it comes to economics. 
and understanding the, the, the relationship between inflation, uh, interest rates and GDP, right? Because that's what the banks are looking at in you know, making their decision as to whether they should hike, hold or cut rates. Now, um, so for me, they're still on the hiking path, but also as well, the fact that they their economy can still, or they think the economy can still, um, you know, support rate hikes um, makes the dollar, you know, a, still a potential buy, even though, you know, the dollar may pull back this week or next week or whenever it pulls back, it's going to pull back. It just makes it, you know, uh, for me, buying opportunities at these areas. Nobody knows exactly which level we're going to turn around from, uh, but what we do know is that it was a the dollar was a bargain here, right? And it made higher highs, so potentially it could be another bargain um, at the 102s and and at these areas here. And of course, we're looking at confluence on other dollar crosses. Anyways, going on to the dollar yen. And the dollar yen has pulled back a little bit again. This was last week's um, analysis, so it's pulled back into the demand zone, into that 28 round number. I think I was saying that last week from the 28 round number to maybe the 27 should be really a potential buying opportunities, um, which there was. And, um, and so let's see what happens here. I do think, though, um, the yen could strengthen based off of risk off uh, sentiment, although it hasn't acted as a risk off currency um, so far. Let's see what happens um, coming into uh, this week. There's been, we've been reading a few uh, bank analysis from um, the likes of, uh, you know, MUFG, for example, uh, that are talking about um, potential uh, yen gaining uh, some strength. But overall, we, I do think the dollar is still a buy against the uh, the yen. It's just looking at pullback opportunities. If you've missed that one, maybe a deeper pullback, if we can get one down to the 127s, would be a really nice um, buying opportunity. If you are looking to potentially buy the, uh, the yen, if you are looking to buy the yen, uh, then any probably moves up towards that 131 is going to be decent down to the 128. So um, we are in the like we're entering into you know the auction phase. What many may know is is a ranging you know market state, an agreement between the valuation of the dollar yen exchange rate between 131 is expensive at the moment and one two uh, well one two seven anyway one two six. Uh, nines are considered you know a bargain so we could see prices come down and that could be a nice buying opportunity but my again my bias is to the uh, the upside so any pullbacks are buying opportunities and potentially uh, we've got a nice demand zone down here way down at the one two ones I think that's going to be a very nice buy if it can get down there anytime soon moving on to the dollar swiss the dollar swiss has made parity right we made one uh one dollar equals one uh franc and um and so dollars literally just increase in strength again you can understand why fundamentally the uh, swiss national bank lagging way behind in monetary policy and this is pretty much what happens right this is what happens when you understand fundamental analysis um you know you get you know this start to happen you know trending markets so it's a case of just understanding where you want to be a buyer again just pullbacks into zones i would prefer a bigger discount if prices can come down to the uh, 98 to 97 areas i think that for me is a, is a nicer zone um but if you do want to get you know long up here just understand that you are getting long at an expensive area um looking at some um, some moving averages what is known as moving averages but actually it's moving fair value um to understand where fair value is because you never want to look to buy at you know an expensive area right so moving uh, averages are actually moving fair value and we've got the monthly moving fair value which is what i like to look at to give give the context of you know if i'm buying in an expensive area if i'm buying for at least fair value or a bargain right so um, we've got the moving fair value um, lining up around that 97.43 to 97.1 uh, area for the monthly moving fair value. So I'm, I'm looking for really, I think for me, the bigger pullback down to this area here. If we can get that and look for uh, a buying opportunity. Um, but if again, if you are looking at getting short on the um, on the uh, uh, dollar Swiss, uh, 
we are up into I guess some zones, but I'm gonna ignore that because this is these are zones from like 2019, so um, not really too keen on trading uh, 2019 zones. Whatever happened three years ago, uh, two and a half, three years ago is not gonna be the thing that drives prices to the downside. Probably a shift in maybe some sort of sentiment or profit taking may, but um, not really interested in uh, in 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 the uh in those uh older zones um looking towards the dollar cad and the dollar cad we're looking at this zone here and um managed to uh get in on an intraday trade matter of fact to stop hunt um but that's beyond the scope of this video uh there was and there is a zone from way back when, but wasn't really trading, looking to trade that. Um, a lot of the guys, we were looking at this area here as a, as a nice stop hunt. And uh, finally, it actually played out, you know, uh, as we expected. There was an intraday um, move, uh, which just happened to coincide with a bit of a long-term supply zone. But uh, yeah, trades are uh, doing okay so far. Uh, with with um, potential, you know, uh, projections around at least this uh, one two eight to one two six area um, to the downside, you know, within the next uh, coming uh, weeks and months. So let's see what happens with uh, with this trade. The Canadian dollar, I think, is a is a decent area, um, a decent currency um, against the uh, the dollar. If the dollar is going to weaken against any currency, it's probably going to be you know the the Canadian dollar is going to be uh, the, the the top choice at the moment. If you are looking for any kind of long trades and continuing to buy the dollar, then again, starting from the one two eight forties is going to be where you want to get long. Um, that's a decent area of uh, of demand. Uh, to look for long trades uh, moving on to the new zealand dollar us dollar and uh, commodity currencies uh, are suffering a little bit especially the um the australian dollar and the um and the new zealand dollar against the us dollar so again last week's analysis we were looking at you know pullbacks into zones if you wanted to get you know uh, short on this currency pair buying the us dollar from a risk off perspective against the uh, new zealand dollar obviously prices didn't come back but it did create some more uh, supply so we've got supply there as well so any pullbacks into those supply zones and then going down into again some sort of intraday time frame if that's what you want to do then that would be uh, actually quite decent for potential short again i would probably prefer um you know the the, the second zone um around this uh 0 0.645 to 0 0.655 area to look for any kind of uh any kind of uh, um, short trades if I was looking to take this I'm not it's not really on my list of things to take um, British pound US dollar again um, we've been calling this for a while now if you go back through my past videos was saying the path of these resistance is to the downside um, and I still can think it is there is actually hidden supply right here uh, zoom in a bit I've got a hidden supply here, but it's quite it's at an expensive area, so I'm not too keen on it. If anything, I'm probably looking for price to come up to the one two sixes, one two fives, one two sixes for a um, for a potential short. This is starting to look more like a bargain now for the US dollar. And um, looking at the pound, let's go to the UK economy. So recently, uh, we've had uh, GDP fall in the UK from zero, it fell 0.1% in March uh, as cost of living crisis hit and the quarterly growth slowed to 0.8 in quarter one. Um, so lots of uh, issues, uh, um, stagflation issues going on in the UK. Um, and we also have as well, um, the Bank of England is told to uh, told more rate hikes needed as inflation harder to tame so the central bank have a massive problem slowing growth but higher inflation so an increase in savings and fixed mortgages weakened transmission former government government advisor says uh, higher rate um, says higher rates needed for longer so um, again the Bank of England is being warned it may have to hike interest rates higher than investors expect even as the risk of recession mounts right in the 
in part because it has lost so much of its power to control inflation. So again, issues, problems, um, just because central banks are hiking rates um, doesn't make it um, always 100% positive. Typically it does, but there are nuances that you have to be aware of. And one of them is also the fact that the economy has to be able to support those uh, rate hikes. And if they can't, or if they seem not to, then for me, um, I think the currency is either you don't trade it or it's a sell. So um, that's where my my uh, my my um, bias is and will continue to be for now. Uh, looking at the euro dollar, so euro dollar, um, there was talks of actually parity going for one dollar to one euro um, within, you know, it's not being ruled out basically. So prices could actually go down to uh, around another three, four hundred pips uh, from here. Um, the euro, looking at this technically, uh, let me just delete some of the, uh, to the analysis. Again, we were looking for, you know, pullbacks to look for short trades. So, you know, our directional bias is, is, is correct, but it's just, you know, the, uh, the euro at the moment is, is weak in comparison to the dollar. And uh, you're just seeing prices really just continue to, you know, move to the downside. So any pullbacks into supply zones, if you can get them, I think of the first opportunities to look for, um, uh, uh, sell a uh, shorting opportunities on the euro dollar although there um i think the euro will be a buy at some point if uh two triggers really if there are you know really good data coming out as far as gdp is concerned and also um if the uh, russia ukraine tensions uh, ease up and uh, de-escalate so that could be an, a, a great uh, euro driver but for now the path uh, I believe resistance is still to the downside fundamentally. So any pullbacks into these areas, I think the one oh uh, the 108s to 109s are going to be decent. Um, in the short term, you're looking at the 105.50s to 1.650s uh, as uh, as potential short trades. Um, so yeah, that's where we are with the euro. Uh, looking at actually euro, some euro fundamentals. Um, Lagarde joins ECB officials in signalling July and rate liftoff. So ECB president says hike may happen weeks after QE concludes quantitative easing. Um, and uh, uh, Elderson, Nagel and Villaroy show rising support for July move. And um, yeah, so so pretty much, you know, the, the, the uh, central bank, um, right at, um, they're on board. Uh, when it comes to, uh, where am I now? Sorry, I'm going all over the place. Here we go. Um, they're on board when it comes to uh, hiking rates, but that's only to probably stop the um, the euro going weaker and uh, or depreciating and devaluing simply because when, um, when a currency devalues, then inflation goes higher. So they have to do something about the, you know, the uh, euro devaluing. So hiking rates is basically being forced upon them so um, it depends on whether the market believes that you know they're going to have sustained rate hikes and whether it's going to do do things or do good things for the economy or whether the economy is going to suffer because of rate hikes so I think um, again uh, for me the path of these resistances to the downside the euro is going to be way more affected um, uh, economically than uh, than the US so uh, for me again short bias Looking at the Aussie dollar, the Aussie dollar um, in a risk off environment, the Australian dollar doesn't do too well, especially against the US dollar. And so again, last week we were looking at some sort of pullbacks if you could get it, but obviously the sentiment has been quite strong uh, uh, last week. So again, just looking at where we can potentially get involved or if you wanna get involved, I'm not really looking to trade this currency pair you know, I think right now up into that 70 cent area, I think that's going to be a nice technical analysis support area um, and anywhere probably within this uh, 71 area to 72. And again, just break down the zone, I think, when you're looking at um, potential uh, areas to look for short trade. So you can see here, that's where you have an area of support and resistance which can be used within supply and demand as confluence so that one um, that 0 0.699 uh, 
oh, 0.70 cent round number, I think, was, might be decent, or just above it, I think, is going to be decent for a potential um, a short trade if you want to continue to buy the US dollar and buy the Australian dollar. The Australian dollar, is it a buy? If you zoom out, um, I think you'd have to really wait for proof of value, meaning you'd have to wait for prices to really prove that there is strong demand and then a pullback before getting long. But for now, um, I think the uh, Australian dollar is probably weaker against the uh, US dollar. Uh, Aussie yen. Aussie yen, again, risk off sentiment coming into the play, and we've seen um, the yen finally start to act like a, a risk off currency that it typically does. So uh, that there was no demand, but we are starting to get demand come in. And if again, this prices start to move higher, um, then any kind of pull back into that demand zone would be decent. The nearest demand zone at the moment, if you want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar, which I am a buyer of the Australian dollar, um, is going to be down here, down at the 85.50s. So um, no buy trades uh, for now until prices either come down to that area or they create a demand zone and then pull back because that would be really where the demand zone, well, actually it's from here to here, would be the way the demand zone is. So um, let's see what happens there. If you're looking at getting short on this currency, um, buying the, the Japanese yen, then the nearest supply zone is going to be up around the 9230s uh, to 94s before looking at getting short. And um, finally, gold and gold again. Gold has not been acting like um, a uh, a safe haven uh, currency. It says gold's strange behavior shows it's no haven, right? This year, um, there's been a lot of. Um, um, uh, uh, decouplings from what typically you know tends to happen um, you've seen it in the uh, Swiss franc Japanese yen and also <clears throat> now more recently in gold and it says lately the precious metal is adding to portfolio volatility moving with the broader markets instead of against them so uh, <clears throat> that's uh, you know something that is uh, uh, a bit strange but again there you know markets aren't 100 percent always um, you know uh, Certain correlations aren't always 100%. Um, there are reasons for it. I personally believe that this is, again, a, more of a bigger liquidity hunt. Um, and uh, the, the big money is really looking to buy gold um, for cheaper levels and manipulating the market. Um, gold is the most confusing of all commodities, uh, says uh, Kitco uh, right now. And here's why. So... Um, it says it says it um, it doesn't seem to want to react to anything outside the US dollar and that's been going on for a solid year and a half says LaForge um, the bad news is bad news and the good news is bad news it doesn't seem to matter gold reached the point where people just don't love it anymore um, don't love it no matter what the fundamentals are uh, they'd rather go play and do uh, other things Bitcoin could be one of them this period doesn't have to last which is key but that's where gold is today, which makes things hard to explain. So looking at, you know, a gold chart, right? It might seem like, oh my days, what the hell is happening? You know, you know um, gold typically goes higher, or should be higher, especially when you think about, you know, risk off inflation problems, economies going into, um, and going into potential recessions and, you know, talk like that, yet gold is doing the opposite. So for me, I've seen this happen and play out many, many times before. Um, I get an example of this, matter of fact, I'll give an example of this was during um, COVID. So if you go back to uh, 2020, demand zone there, right? It was during this period here where what, you know, we had March 2020, right? And then the Federal Reserve announced quantitative easing the world was in lockdown yet the markets for a few days or a week or two um, actually went to the downside but it was the smart money taking out all the liquidity and buying right gold for very very cheap and then look what happened right prices went to new all-time highs so you consider what's going on now and you consider the strange moves of gold it's not, you know, it's not unbelievable to think that, in fact, the smart money who know what's happening in or potentially going to happen in the next or forecasting anyway, in the next, you know, three to six months, um, 
you know, if we're talking about if you do believe in the fact that, you know, the, the, the world is going into, you know, global recessions, food shortages, etc. It makes all the sense in the world for the smart money to keep buying, right? To keep buying for cheaper rather than um, uh, gold, you know, going, going higher. And it makes all the sense, again, because a lot of traders who believe... Um, or who typically find um, you know gold to be you know go higher or should go higher in this? What are they doing? If they're buying, yeah, they're pressing buy. That provides liquidity for anyone who wants to do what sell. But so that you know, uh, if anyone does want to sell, they're making money in the short term. But also as well, if you're if you're buying at certain levels, right, your stop loss order is a sell order, right? So it allows. Um, the again financial institutions to buy for cheaper when you get triggered that's forced selling and you're forced to sell to the uh, buyer so um, you know there's liquidity all underneath all down here if everyone's going long generally retail traders and even other you know institutional traders to go in long um, but the really really smart money with deep pockets I think personally are looking at um, are accumulating at these areas here um, and uh, but let's see what happens overall right but again my bias is still to the long side especially when that dollar and if that dollar starts to come down I don't know if it's going to come down for now but if it does start to come down then um, I do think that the uh, that gold is still um, a buy but for now it looks like we're seeing um, you know the market come down if you are looking at getting short on gold then we've got, actually I'll just draw that here, it makes it more simpler, right? So we've got a nice buying opportunity. So anyone who missed out on buying gold earlier this year at these prices can now get involved in that trade as well now. So again, nothing's changing. In fact, things are potentially getting worse. So this does, does start to look like more of a bargain opportunity. But if you are looking to short gold, then the 1840s is probably going to be the first area to look for any kind of short trades. Anyways, guys, um, that's it for this week. Uh, hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care. And I'll speak to you all soon.